guys, welcome back to another episode of Movie About Movie Talks. This is episode nine. Hello, guys. Sorry I wasn't here last week. I can't remember what I was doing last week, but I was busy, so I pushed it back a week. But we're here, we're here. It's great to be back live. I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening. Um, but of course, I have a, another fantastic guest with me tonight, and I'm so happy to actually have him back on the channel because it's been a while now since he's been on, and um, we've, I think we must have done a good, like, somewhere between five and ten streams together now. And uh, it's great to have him back on. Uh, is Mr. Magpie Movies, here he is. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the second best live stream after mine in the community. I'll take it. I'll take it. Second <laughs> <time>. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna. You. I'm not gonna blow your trumpet and say you're the best. You know, it's obviously you got You got to do some self promotion along there. So, yeah. do you know, there's enough people in the community now. I'll take second. Second's fine with me. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'm first, and so I'll see crown myself yeah. with that. But yes. But yeah, we have done a lot of live streams together. We have. We've done a few on your channel, a few on mine, and we've done the sort of collab collaboration one. music one. Yeah. Yeah. I still came up with that, didn't I? Didn't I put um, Magpie and Bugs yeah. Multiverse of Media or something? Yeah. It was, it was going to be the, the name of it. But then life gets in the way, doesn't it? We just never got around to doing it. Uh, we need to we need to really get together and do the third, another another one of those at some point. But um, well, Speaking of that, before we get into things, went mm. to my local, I forgot to tell you this, I went to my local charity shop on, what day was it? I think it was Sat Saturday, yeah, because the kids were with my mum's, right. my parents, should I say. Uh, and I went in the charity shop, and as I went in, and as I was coming out, I looked in, no, it was a Friday on my lunch hour, and I came mm. out, and I looked in the window with the two little ty fluffy things. So I took a picture of the message to the wife, and I was like, mm -hmm. "Shall I get them for the kids?" And she's like, "Yeah." How much other? I was like, "A quid each." She's like, "Yeah, definitely." So if they'd be good, then get mm -hmm. them. I was like, "Okay." So when I went back in to pay, I looked behind the counter, and on a stool, underneath this kind of like box, I could see a vinyl for with the Beatles. Oh, I was right. like, oh, "Okay." Good. So yeah. I looked to the side, and I could see they had loads of vinyls for two pound mm -hmm. each. And I went to the lady, and I said. Well, how much is that that vinyl over there? Can I have a mm -hmm. look at them? She's like, they just come in and help yourself. So I looked through it. So I had yeah. with the Beatles and that Hard Day's Night and the, mm -hmm. the mono ones, not the stereo ones. Right. Yeah. Um, she goes, I'll have to ask the manager. So she went, the manager came and she goes, Well, I've had somebody coming in quote 15 to 20 pounds for them. Um, mm -hmm. So we'd, um, I goes, Is that how much you sell them for? She goes, Oh, we'll sell them 10 pounds each. And in my head, I'm thinking, That's not yeah. bad, but they weren't in the best of conditions. You could tell they yeah. were first pressing that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, We've got like scratches on them, so I just left yeah. them. I mean, that's that's the thing with records; it always comes down to condition. But those original monos, they they can go for quite a lot. Some of them, the stereos are worth even more. Uh, surprisingly, the original stereos, but um, the monos. I thought yeah, mono would be. I thought mono would be more. Well, the the original stereos they charged more for them, so less people bought the stereo copies. Right, I'm with you. Less of them. So if you can get an original stereo with like the folded over corners, you're probably looking at about 50 quid plus. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I came back and I was thinking, oh, 10 pound each. I can't really afford it. She's like, no, I'm waiting for it to go. What if you want to go back and get them? But, but she never did, so I didn't get them. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, say like records, I still remember this from my record collecting days, always comes down to condition. Yeah, they weren't the best. I mean, the covers were ripped and everything. You could, you could uh, tell from from the state of them, they were original originals, not like reprints yeah. or whatever. Um, a ten pound each just to sit downstairs to play once again would have been all right. But yeah, yeah, right. I mean, I got my John Lennon collection one from nineteen eighty eighty two, I think, and that was like five pound. Yeah. So that one's all right. But yeah. Anyway, yes, we're here to talk about movies, not talk about music. Yes. But I just thought <laughs> I just remembered it popped in my head. I thought no, I'd no, mention that. Well, I, I don't mind doing a bit of music talk every. You know, music's all cool with me. <laughs> it's all right. We're all good. But um, we do have a few comments, so I'll just get to say to people, if I do brush over your comment, I apologize. But like the last, the streams I've done like on this season two, I've been getting so many comments coming, I never get to the bottom of them. So if I do brush over a comment, stuff in personal, I'm just going to pick and choose. But at the minute, we haven't got loads, so we'll go over a It's few always the hour and a half that we have together, be it on this stream or on our music one or whatever. It kind of, the first 50, 20 minutes, you can see it kind of feel like it's kind of, and for all the better purposes, not being offensive yeah. or being horrible, no, you know, drags. But then after that, it just rushes by. Yeah, it does. It really, I, I find out with all my streams, honestly, it's like some nights I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, just watching the telly, half sleep. I had to record my podcast today as well. I literally got done with that about half hour ago. And I'm like, I could just happily sit here and play some Formula One or something tonight. I was like, oh, I'll get set up. 
But then, which once it gets going, these streams always a cracking time. I find they're always a lot of fun. So I like I like the more interactions. The more people have the comments, the more it kind of mm. opens it up. And then people who are then commenting, yeah, then have that ability to then answer to that person, and it just yeah. opens up a kind of a, a nice oh, stream, really. And that's it, but I keep my streams very simple. It's very much just talk to whoever's here and bring up some comments. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it, that's the best way, man. Because yeah. we could talk to each other as much as we want, but we're also there to entertain people who are watching, be it five people, exactly. ten people, two people. So it would be nice to have that interaction with those guys as well, yeah. or ladies, of course. Yeah, no, exactly. I completely agree. Well, we'll crack on with some comments. I've got this this one here coming just off the fire. They were here very early. They really want to get our opinions on this movie. Um, okay. What are your opinions on the film The Lobster? Have you seen this movie? I haven't. I know it's a Colin Farrell one. Um, and I know what you've got to find love, and if you don't find love, then you turn into a lobster or an animal or something like that. Yeah. But I, ha I have not seen that one. No. Is I, it I, very, it's, I think it's very not very similar, but it's a kind of creature feel along along the same lines of Tusk, the Kevin Smith film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it is on that sort of. Like, I I I did watch the movie when it came out, and it's by the director of The Favorite, which obviously come after. I'm I'm just not a fan of his style. It just doesn't gel for me. It's very grey, miserable looking movie, and I know that's the tone of the narrative as well. But uh, it just didn't click with me that one. But then again, when I watched it, it was sort of, sort of the same thing with like the film like Midsummer. I watched Midsummer before I'd started to appreciate those kind of films. Um, so okay. I don't know. Maybe I revisited it. I might enjoy it more now. Um, but at the time, I didn't like it much. I think the lobster, judging by the trailer and the, the synopsis and everything, is going to be very much a Marmite kind of film. Yeah, I think. Oh, yeah, I think it'll be probably be a one that I'll watch and go. You know what? I haven't seen that. I'll give it a go. Yeah. It's on Netflix or it's on Prime or whatever. I'll give it a shout. Give it a shot if I'm if I've got the spare hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. But it's not something it would jump to the top of my list to watch. No, no, I, I, I can't. I'm surprised I actually watched it when I did because I can't remember. Was it 2019 or something like that? I don't go, don't stop me off. Yes, I've got to do the yes for our quiz, man. I'm afraid. Don't go on about <laughs> yeah. yes. I don't want to give anything away in case it's on there. Maybe put it on there because I'll look it up after the stream. Okay. Um, <laughs> the lobster. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, I'm I'm surprised I watched it because it was sort of before I'd got into watching the more arty farty movies. So I I can see why I didn't appreciate it when I did, which is why yeah, I'm I not. I think you, we both know that I'm not a fan of any kind of arty farty kind of yeah movies. If anything bores me and has a longer panoramic shot of scenery that lasts yeah. longer than two seconds and it's done and it's arty farty and you can do one <laughs> that's fair enough hey can't fault you can't fault you um the next one i'll I'm tell you what sorry before i go that go i watched elvis for the first time last night oh i saw actually where did i see you put it oh it was in the chat i think one of the chats were in i think you mentioned yes it. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because the HD um, digital copy came out last night, so I watched it via the Flix Tour uh, website. Oh my god, how good is it? I loved it. I walked out the cinema like that's one of that, that's one of the best films of the year. <laughs> I just couldn't believe. I mean, I know everybody said Austin Butler nailed Elvis, and obviously, mm -hmm. not obviously, but Elvis died the year before I was born, so I didn't even live through that. Or even when, like John Lennon in 1980 was too, but. Yeah, it's not like say for example, I'm just putting it out there. But like, if Liam there was a Liam Gallagher film, I'd yeah, be like, yeah. well, I know what he was like because I grew up with him, so that'll be a good impression mm -hmm. or a good um, interpretation of him. So with Elvis, yeah. I didn't have that. So no. you you go off like documentaries and film footage of what he was like, but from what he was like that you see from footage to how Austin Butler did it, yeah. he nailed it. It was, oh, but everyone's mm -hmm. like, oh, I was crying at the end. I didn't cry. The end. So I felt bad. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I can't lie. I think I've only ever cried once during the cinema movie. Um. But like, I was very upset. At the end. It's such a depressing ending, and we all knew that we were going to get to that depressing ending. But well, it's yeah, a bit I, like the Titanic. You know how it ends, don't you? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I thought the first act was a bit choppy, but the, the later two acts were just. They were really fantastic, I thought. I loved it. It's still just in my top ten of the year at the minute. Whether it will stay there till the end of the year, I don't know. But I. Great film, though. Great. It's film. funny because when I finished watching last night, and then obviously I've been working today, but I've been mm -hmm. thinking about you know when you go to, go to bed after you watch the cinema or you have watched yeah. the movie, and you think about the film over in your head. Mm -hmm. I'm actually tempted to watch it again tonight. Yeah. I mean, not all of it because I'm for two and a half hour, two mm -hmm. hour forty minutes. Yeah. But just to watch it again, I've been started watching. I've been searching documentaries on Virgin, um, mm -hmm. and I've got that Searcher DVD. What this one here that I got from this one. 
that I got from uh, oh, right. yeah, yeah, no, no. HMV for like two ninety nine mm-hmm. um, to watch as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting. I love biopic kind of movies. You know that yeah. Walk the Line, yeah. Ray, things like that. I love yeah. that kind of stuff because it gives you an insight. Because as much as you want to read up about those people, if somebody could present it on the telly, mm-hmm. I'm still surprised they haven't done. I know we've had Nowhere Boy and we've had Backbeat, but we've never had a John Lennon movie. Yeah, I, do you know what? I think they're just nervous to do it because I, I, I think it's um, I, I suppose I could do a John one, but I think everyone would prefer just one on the Beatles themselves. And I can imagine because there hasn't been a band one yet, really has has there? They've all sort of been in like the Queen one wasn't really a Queen one; it was just a Freddie Mercury one. Yeah, yeah I, I think yeah, that's yeah. what they're probably nervous of. But I mean, yeah, but yeah, I just thought I mentioned that to Elvis, and I, I, I was blown. It's, it's still. It's, it's probably second of my favorite films of the year, so the Batman and then that one, I think. I mean, um, I, I I, it. I've got it in number 10 because I keep my letterbox ranking, um, and it's number 10 on mine, but I have seen 83 or four films of the year, so okay. <laughs> it might seem a bit low, but it's actually doing quite well. I'm doing a thing now, I, I kind of got out of it, and apologies mm. to the questions and that'll come through, <laughs> but I'm now starting to watch at least a movie a night, be it yeah, new ones, old ones. What I, I mean, do, like, yeah. <laughs> Last week or the week before, I started going through all the shark crappy ones, like Shark mm-hmm. Bay and oh, God. that kind of stuff. And then yeah. I watched Prey on Friday, mm-hmm. and then I watched Lightyear. Uh, well, I actually wanted to watch Lightyear with the kids, and they were like, "We're not watching yeah. that." So, so I was like, "Right." So I watched it on an evening without the kids. Um, I'm just catching up with lots of lots of like I watched um, Fletch, which oh, right. yeah, yeah. is really really. I watched it when I was younger. Uh, yeah. I saw it in the charity shop, and it was like I've I've seen this film, but I was quite young when I saw it. I think <laughs> it's still still good. Yeah. Um, and then Jamie sent me um, the day after, oh, right. which is basically it was a TV show, and it's about going up to a Cold War where the mm-hmm. where the nuclear bombs went off and the aftermath kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so watch that. It's just trying to get through loads, and I've got, yeah. this is what I'm watching at the minute. I don't know if anybody's seen that one. The Bay. I haven't seen that one, but I've heard of it. It's a horror film, isn't it? Yeah, it's about, I believe, I've watched it ages ago, but ages and ages ago. Mm. And when I went to visit um, Jamie Batman mm. in Bridlington, we went to see X and, and mm-hmm. this was there. And I, so yeah. I picked it up for like two quid, I think. Was it two quid? I can't remember. Um, but I believe it's about, if I can remember. Oh. I don't know if that's me. That was, no, it wasn't. It was Rob. Rob was oh. ringing me. Okay, oh, no worries. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's about an infection in water, which becomes yeah. a pandemic or something in there. Okay, that's so, like that Mark Ruffalo one that came out recently, the Dark Water one. Yeah, but this is more, like, this is more I think this is more like a handheld situation. Yeah. But, uh, okay. but, yeah, great. but I'm trying to do more movies because I, I feel like I'm not watching as many. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I forget what I watch. Yeah. So, oh, that you should you should get the app letterbox. I use it all the time. It helps me keep track. See, of I've it. got it. I'm on there, but I just can't be. Bothered. It's just a case oh, of um, I love idleness, it. really. To be honest. Oh, see, I love it. As soon as I finish a movie, I'm straight on there. Um, <laughs> but lately, all I've been doing is watching like 30s, 40s, 50s movies. Like I've mm-hmm. done like all the Universal monster horror films. I've done things like Bridge Over the River Kwai, Free Tens of Yuma, um. Um, to Kill a Mockingbird. I've been loving all that stuff, all the old movies lately. Clint Eastwood stuff, going more into the 70s. But, yeah, that's all I've been watching lately. I did watch one Alfred Hitchcock film I've been watching, waiting to watch for ages and ages, which is Rear Window. Oh, that's... I want to say it's my favourite one, but Psycho is just amazing as well. I love Rear Window. But I did not like Rear Window. I don't know whether I was not in the right mood or it felt like it dragged or whatever. But I think I, just... I gave give it like a nine and a half out of ten i love that movie i love it I tr- i'm trying to get in hitchcock because i've got like, like the birds i love the birds the birds is probably my favorite one uh yeah. it's psycho i've got it i'm gonna i was gonna get like the box set of it but mm-hmm. then i'm like well i had the box set then i sold it yeah i never got around to watching it but the thing with hitchcock is yeah you have to be in the mood you have to go right i'm going to go through these specifically yeah. because otherwise it's not the kind of film that i would put on normally just yeah. it's the same with harry potter I put that off for years because I yeah. wasn't interested in Harry Potter. And I thought, you know what? If you're going to be into movies and you do a movie channel, you need to see that because it's a massive franchise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I sat down, bought the box set, watched them all, and then sold them. Mm-hmm. Um, so at least I can say, well, I've seen Harry Potter. The only series I haven't seen in that kind of genre, that kind of area is, um, I've forgotten the name of it, the one with Robin Patterson in it. Oh, Twilight. Twilight, that's yeah, the one. I, yeah. I actually haven't seen Twilight either, to be fair. Um, but I'm surprised it took you that long to see Harry Potter. Harry Potter's, I love Harry Potter. I grew up with Harry Potter, though. I was part of the generation that 
saw the films coming out one by one. So, but um, so I was sort of forced into liking it. But yeah. no, no, I say that I actually do really love Harry Potter. I've got even now. I've got no. I've watched them all the films. I know how it ends and everything like that. I've then obviously enough that I was going to start on Fantastic Beasts trilogy. Um, yeah, they're not. They're a bit more. But it, it just doesn't interest me. I, I don't know. It's it's yeah. just not for me. I'll watch them eventually, but it's just yeah. like it did with Harry Potter. But it's just not for me. But anyway, yes, bubbling. Get you can put the question. Yes. now. I apologize. <laughs> That's all right. Let's do another. We'll do another question. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? So. Jim asks, um, are you going to do another Pixar ranking video? I, I, have you done a Pixar like, ranking on your channel? I can't remember if I've seen one or not. Me? No. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I I stay away from Disney no, and animated and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Because in my mind, I'm like, that's more for... <laughs> Boo! Subscribe. <laughs> falls down. Uh, it's more for kids. So mm -hmm. I don't watch it. I'll go watch it. You know, um, The only Pixar to me that I really like is probably Wally and yeah. Coco. If Coco's Pixar, Pixie, yeah, that's Pixar, yeah, yeah. Those are the only two of those that I like. Um, but I wouldn't do a ranking because I haven't seen them all. Uh, I bought loads of um Blu-rays when my eldest, which is which was the first born at the time, mm -hmm. I bought yeah, loads yeah. of Blu-rays and put them all away for her to watch. But she's not interested in anyway. She's got Disney Plus. By the time that she's up to watching it now, she's got Disney Plus. So I've got loads of all these Disney's put away that she's not going to watch. Yeah. That's the thing. I struggle to buy a lot of films now because um, they're all on bloody streaming services. You know, it's like um, a film will come out that I like um, and I'll see it's going on Disney Plus and I'm like, I don't really need to buy it, to be honest. It's going on there. The only ones I, I can't lie, I do buy Disney because I've got my collection of collectible slips. I buy Marvel and Star Wars because I love Marvel and Star Wars. I've got to have it all. But like anything else, if it's going on Disney Plus, I'm like, you know, don't need to worry about it. It's going on there. I, to be fair, I enjoyed like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but it seems to me Disney got very much going for the dog companion, aren't they? I mean, in Hawkeye, you had the pizza dog, this one, you've got yeah. the cat, Captain mm -hmm. Marvel, you've got the cat. It seems to be these because the cat in Lightyear was very similar to the cat from Captain Marvel, apart from obviously it was robotic, yeah. Yeah, oh, honestly, I forget it was a cat in Captain Marvel, to be honest. Um, <laughs> well, well, it no, got rid of his I, eye, didn't it? Remember, yeah, that was such a terrible, yeah, but you know, you know, I love Captain Marvel, I know you don't, but I do like Captain Marvel. No, it's, it's still dead last on my MCU ranking. Um, <laughs> but um, no, Lightyear, I liked it. I liked the start of it when they do the time stuff. I thought that was kind of unique. And then it just kind of turned into a bit of a generic Pixar movie, um, which is a shame because I just wanted And it then to... the reveal at the end with Zorg, I was just like, really? Is that the way you're going with that? You... I didn't... I, I sort of see why they were trapped into a corner because I like, I don't want to spoil it in case people haven't seen it but like you know Toy Story 2 establishes that it's his father they do a Star Wars joke so I don't know I don't know it's 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 a good film but it, it should have been great I think is the problem it's Buzz Lightyear I, you know Toy Story is huge maybe they're going to do a Woody one next to do with all his like you know like yeah. but then again he's because Lightyear is more of the era wasn't he with the movie and as the mm -hmm. TV show whatever it was at the time because if you're going to do Woody then that'll be back like more decades earlier and that, that, there's no mention of him being in a movie. Yeah, I think the problem with Woody as well is is they sort of done his stuff on in Toy Story 2, didn't they? They showed his yeah. roundup. Yeah, with Jesse and the thing yeah. Bob and then the then the horse and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um so yeah, I'm not sure. But it wouldn't that. surprise me if Disney did do it as a bit of a uh... mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, I mean, well, we know what Disney are like. Don't get me wrong, I love Disney, but um like all these big companies, first thing on their mind is money. <laughs> yep. So, True. Um, so Movie Man asks, Magpie, can you do an update collection covering everything? <laughs> um, do you know what? I do one video a year. I, I, I can't lie. I know that people, for some reason, really look forward to seeing it, but it's one of my least favorite videos to film. I show my entire Blu-ray collection. I feel like every year I'm talking about the same bloody films because it doesn't change loads over each year. It brings yeah. in the biggest amount of views. People love it for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know, because although I have gained a lot, I've gained some. I've sold a lot. Um, I've still got like upstairs in a loft because I've only got the one Billy Book case here. That's it. I know you've got like three or four around yours mm -hmm. and one in the corridor, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I've only got the one here, and then I've got like a little. Oh God, can you cut me hand? I've got the one here, and then I've got a little one down here. Yeah. Um, and then I've got some lined up a lot in front of the telly, but yeah. But that's the thing is, just 
it's just a nightmare pulling them all out all the time. Like, I, like I think the last one I remember, I was like sweating buckets by the end of it because I was constantly just pulling stack out, going over them, putting them away, pulling out another stack, talking about them, putting them away, another stack. It's, it's when you when you haven't got much room, and then like yeah. you've got to put an S in there, and you're like, I've got space for an S. <laughs> and then you've got to rearrange everything. That's why I've had to rearrange stuff and then leave yeah. space for stuff in case I'm not going to put anything else in. But with regards to collection doing everything, if I had the time, possibly, but it would take a long video. Um, yeah. And I I think that's that's the kind of thing with my my personal, my YouTube channel is mm -hmm. I did a lot during lockdown. And although I'm in the same position, I feel sometimes that uh, you do too much too soon and all the video ideas you have or yeah. going to have Either somebody else has done it, and you're being like repetitive, and it, it gets stale, um, or you, you kind of. Although I still upload videos, but you just sometimes lose the the connection, the um, the love for it as such. And if at that point, that's the point you've got to kind of take a step back because you you're not doing it. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it because you want to. Uh, and although I still want to, it's not as as much as I did. And I've also I'm also not buying as much stuff, and it's just. Mm. I mean, I had this conversation with, with Jason the other day. I, I feel like sometimes uh, you get more views if you spend more money. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I feel like um, I used to, like, this time last year when I was buying a lot more, most of my videos would get a 1,000 views. Now I'm sort of around that 800 mark on a lot of my videos, which, don't get me wrong, I'm still happy with that. That's great. I'm, I'm happy if I get 10 views, to be honest. Um, but... I spend a lot less nowadays on Blu-rays. Like, I'm not pre-ordering near as much. There's actually a comment like quite far down here. Someone said, like, um, any upcoming home media releases you've ordered? Um, and I, I'm going to be honest. I, I actually did order two Blu-rays yesterday because like, I got paid. I was like, I'll treat myself. But other than that, I can't even think of a film I've got on pre-order at the minute. But genuinely, no. I can't. <laughs> I don't have any on pre-order. None whatsoever. No. This time last year, I would have about probably five to ten on pre-order. Yeah, I mean, if circumstances had changed, yeah, I would have got um, Event Horizon Steelbook on pre-order. Mm -hmm. I would have got the uh, Edge of Tomorrow HMV yeah. one. Mm -hmm. I would have pre-ordered Elvis. Uh, mm -hmm. I would have got the Beatles uh, one. Um, yeah. And then upcoming, I can't even think of any of upcoming. I would have, I would have up upgraded my American Werewolf to, mm -hmm. in London to 4K. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But... Now I'm kind of like, well, I've got it on Blu-ray. Majority of films now I watch upstairs, which is on the 3D telly, HD telly, yeah. not the 4K telly. Mm -hmm. It's only very occasionally I go downstairs to watch it because I want to watch downstairs. I've got the sound bar on, but I can't do that because the kids are yeah. asleep. So mm -hmm. I have to have it quiet. You know, so I, it's just, it no. depends what the thing is. So with regard, anyway, moving away from the question is yeah. I could do one. It's just getting mm -hmm. the time to do it because it means these yes. wouldn't be bad and the ones down here wouldn't be bad to go through. But then I've got to go through the ones in the loft, which are all in plastic boxes, you know. Yeah. At... I mean, my videos end up being between an hour to two hours in the whole collection, so they do take a lot of time, that's for sure. Exactly. And then the problem I sometimes have is um, getting them uploaded to YouTube yeah. takes ages. And whether yeah. I've got the actual memory on my phone um, yeah. to actually upload them, yes. So I sit, I sit my computer next to the, my internet router when I have to do it. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. It takes up a lot of time. But, it does. Um, Go. Well, yes. we, we've, we've actually got a music question up here next from Mr. Bring Your Own Popcorn. That's Jack. Hello, mate. Um, speaking of music, are you Springsteen fans? I recently got tickets to see his next show. I'm right at the front next to the stage. Any favourite album songs by him? Well, I can imagine that's going to be a great concert. I do like Springsteen, but I don't know loads about him. I mean, Born in the USA, the album, is the only one I've ever really played much. And is it Dancing in the... No. Don't, don't, what's that really famous Springsteen song? Know. The uh, the one which has got um, Who Are Our Friends in it? I don't know. I don't know. Hang on. Dance, just... It is Dancing in the Dark, isn't it? Yeah, Dancing, dancing in the Dark. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. on the Born in the USA album. Yeah, I, I yeah. have that song on my playlist. So that one comes on every now and then. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't really know loads about Springsteen. I do like him. He's just never one that I really dove into his career. Yeah, it was a lad that I went to uni with. He used to love Bruce Springsteen and the e Street Band and going about. Yeah, how it was like him and Bob Dylan were his favorites yeah. and all that. But my dad liked Bruce Springsteen. I think I remember my dad playing, as you said, Born in the USA album with the mm -hmm. the jeans in the back back shot with yeah. all the stars and stripes in the in the, in the background. I remember that. Um, but my favorite, if I have a favorite song. 
would mm-hmm. probably be Streets of Philadelphia. I just oh, that's a good song actually. Yeah, I forgot about that one. But that's mm-hmm. but yeah, I'm I couldn't name much uh, of his songs. I wouldn't say that he's an artist that I would put on. I would. I'd hate to say this, but the only songs I know are the ones which are commercially famous. Yeah, I'm sort of the same. I, I, I reckon I couldn't name them, but like I would pick up on a lot of songs on the Born in the USA album because it's the only one I've played a few times. But yeah, I'm yeah. sort of the same, to be honest. Yeah, I got brought up with, with that album and Sting, yeah. Fields of Gold and Wet, Wet, Wet. Wet, Wet, Wet. Yeah, and no, my mum likes... My on mom Simply likes... Red. Let's not forget Simply Red. Do you know what? Simply Red are pretty good. They're pretty good. I don't mind a bit of Simply Red. I've got a couple of their records tucked away. <laughs> Stars is a good album. I'll give them credit with that. That's the one I've got. 89, I think. Something like it's that. It's the bit at the beginning where he goes, I love you. And he goes, show me. And he goes, do, 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 do. <laughs> yes. Yes, that was very cool. <laughs> but yes. well, so question, answer the question, Jack. To be fair, it's good. Bruce Springsteen is a icon of music, but unfortunately, yeah. he's not. he's not in my... I wouldn't say taste because it, I like people who write their own music and play mm-hmm. their own instruments. So he's, yeah. he's got thumbs up for me, but yeah. I'm more down the British kind of indie, uh, mm-hmm. Brit pop kind of stuff for me. Yeah. I don't know. That, that's fair. I'm, yeah, that's fair enough. But um, hey, very cool that you're going to see him though, Jack. I'm sure that would yeah, be man. great. Quality. So, um, where was I? I had another one here. Here we go. Um, so this is a pretty easy one for me, but I'm curious as to what your answer is going to be for this one. Oh, no. Um, What's your prized possession in your collection? I mean, for me, I mean, I've said this, I've had this comment come up a couple of times in the past over the last couple of years. For me, it's still going to be my lightsaber that I've like, spent a silly amount of money on. It's like I can prize possession. Are we talking here Blu-rays, movie-related, or just in general? Just movie-related, I would say, I reckon. Prize possession, that's I don't know. I know from, like, overall, it will be my signed Linkin Park album. Because mm-hmm. I got because I met them and I got them signed and it was obviously before Chester topped yeah. himself or hung himself. Um, but with regards to prize possession, I don't know. I don't really have anything which is. I mean, I love my Lord of the Rings steel books. Um, yeah, that's a nice set actually. I've seen a few people unbox that. Um, I don't know to be honest. Probably, which is going to be. Have I got it here? I don't know if I got it here. Have I got it here? Uh, where is it? Is my um, that um, Phil uh, 4K Baker sent me, which is um, the Monster Squad on Blu ray. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't find it now. No. It's normally oh. right here, and I can't <laughs> actually see it. But yeah, it's probably that because it's hard yeah. to get. And, and Phil was generous, I can't even find it now. Phil was generous enough to um, to send it to me. Yeah, so, so probably actually, and um, my. This my Ghostbusters um, anniversary oh, right. steelbook yeah. one. Is that is that like a hard one to get? Then that one. I don't know. I thought it got released in America and it, yeah. uh, it, um, for the celebratory thirty. I don't know how many years it was now. Um, and I, I, I got it from Germany, I think, because I couldn't get the import. Mm-hmm. Um. Obviously, the other prized possession I've got is a, is a lovely Gladiator poster, which obviously mm-hmm. goes without saying, because a certain someone sent me that Gladiator poster. Yeah. That was okay. you. It was me. It was me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was I waiting for the penny to drop there, and it never did. Yeah, I've still got a poster downstairs uh, for Rob. I've still got that Mortal Kombat one, which I made him like two months ago now. <laughs> I just haven't That's got it. Enough, because home. he messaged me and he says, oh... I told him I was on the stream tonight. He's like, oh, I've still got those vinyls. I said I was going to send them. I, was going to say, I kept thinking to myself, oh, I need to get that off to him. I kept thinking, oh, well, he's had those vinyls longer. <laughs> yeah, this is true. But at least he mentioned it to me. So he's, so he's aware he still has them. But uh, yeah, prize possession. I don't know. It probably is um, that, that Monster, Squad, Monster Squad because it's, it's yeah. a lot to do with my youth and bringing up. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't be anything Gladiator really because he can get that anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. But, I do like, I mean, I like my Halloween Scream Factory ones is that I've got. They're and, really nice, actually. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not getting them because I, I, you got to import them and stuff, and I've got a nice box set here. With you got the Germany in one, didn't you? Yeah, but I am actually, like, because I see they're doing the other Halloween films now, the late ones, and I think Chucky's getting a release that's similar. I know. I can't lie. They, they're going to look great on the shelf if you have all of them. <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm, oh, yeah. 
they're up there. Although I do have to say that this is also probably one of my prized possessions. It's 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 a it's a it's a great movie. You know, goes over my head. Yeah. <laughs> this is... Funny enough, right? There's a bit in this which, which is obviously only people from northeast would know that mm-hmm. he is the character in it, Santiago Nunez. He um, Munez, sorry, he's driving to St James's Park for for a trial. Mm-hmm. And but when he drives over the Tyne Bridge, he's driving away from St James's Park. So he's had, he's actually driving right. towards Gateshead. But yeah, but you but you wouldn't know that unless no, obviously no. from the area. <laughs> but um, yeah, and the lead singer from ACDC is in it as well. I was, I got no idea. Yeah, I got no idea on this one. But no, I'm joking. No, no, that's not my price position. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a hard question. though, to be fair, is that what would you be my price? But I really, I don't know. I mean. I've got a signed Newcastle United shirt, but that's not movie related. Um, well, I mean, you know, do non movie as well. If you want, you know, struggling a bit. I mean, I've got, I've just got an easy pick, really. To be honest, I was. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Really, although I do, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy. I've got that. The Stranger Things season yeah, one, four K. I keep hoping that when it's all said and done, there might be a, some sort of UK release. I can't believe there isn't already. To be honest. <laughs> Because they only did the first two, and the second one is more expensive than the first one, but I yeah. can't find it anywhere. Um, I, again, it's one of those like, I can I didn't really want to spend loads on it because I just figured well, it's on Netflix. But if they do do a UK release, don't get me wrong, I probably will pick it up because oh, I yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I, well, as soon as the the the, the, um, the fourth season finished, I actually said to the missus because she never watched it. And I was just like, mm. "Do you want to watch Strange Things and go from the beginning, and we'll watch it yeah. again?" She's like, no, not my cup of tea. I was like, oh. well, that's, that's straight out the fucking water. Yeah. So, so I didn't Fair watch enough. it. But yeah, no. I'll have a think further on as we go through for the next yeah. hour or so about that. Because I, I, I don't know the, the possession in my um, thing is. Because I've got nothing signed or anything like that. No, I'm, I must admit, I've got quite a few signatures in the collection now. But I don't know if I'd say any of them my forest possession. Um, mate, I've got an art Robert Downey autograph. That one's pretty cool, I guess. Um <laughs> But I got another question here, which I'm kind of curious to get your take on because oh, I no. think you liked this movie. But for me, this is my favourite movie of the year. Um, I loved it. You might know what's coming. Better be the fucking Green Knight. No, 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 it's not a Green okay. Knight. No, no. Um, <laughs> so, um, James, I watched Everything Everywhere all at once the other night. Really great movie. So far, it's my favourite film of the year. I'm in agreement with that. Uh, one of the most original films I've ever seen. I'm also in agreement with that. Paul, what did you think of it? I, I oh no, that's not a good face. <laughs> I, no, don't get me wrong. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. Um, okay, that's all right then. That's fine. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I think it's funny because all the way through it, I'm like, the guy of India during the Temple of Doom. Do you know what? I was the same. He, he I, I was like, as I'm like short round. He said, Doctor Jones, Doctor Jones. Yeah, I'm like, that's yeah, you. That's you. Yeah, yeah. As soon as he spoke, I was like. I, I, I really think it's him. And I come out of the cinema, I said to my mates, I was like, I think I know who that actor was. And I said, I don't want to be come across like I'm being stereotypical because he's Asian and the person I'm about to compare him to is Asian. I was like, I just, but, but I think it's the kid from Indiana Jones. <laughs> and obviously, Data out of Goonies as well. He? So, yeah, yeah. I, but I, it's I, like, it was a bit like, like, in my head, it was like that meme, you know, that DiCaprio meme out of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood where he goes... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, yeah. I was just like, yeah. I was like, yeah. But no, I enjoyed it. I didn't like the whole sausage fingers thing in it, uh, and I didn't realize that Jamie Lee Curtis had a big, as big a role in it as, as yeah. she did. Um, and the whole donut thing as well. I thought was oh, okay. Um, it's probably fifth favorite of my films this year. I'll probably, and I know I'm going to get a lot of stick for this, but I preferred Multiverse of Madness to it, and I apologize. Because on second viewing, I enjoyed that a lot more than I did the first viewing. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's one of those films I would say in my head is it's like Cruella, mm-hmm. where I enjoy Cruella. And a lot of people who watch Cruella were like, oh my God, it's so good, it's so good. And I watched it and I was like, you know, it's, it's good, mm-hmm. but it's not as good as everybody's saying it is. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's my opinion of everything everyone all at once is yeah. that one, I don't like talk about it because it takes you half an hour to see the title of the film. Yeah. Um, and it's good. But, okay, maybe I might put it third or fourth above. Yeah. I might actually, you know, thinking about it with Doctor Strange, it might be just above that because of the originality of it. Um, 
But yeah, I still think, like I said earlier on, Batman for me is nailed in. There's nothing that I've seen is, is going to top that. I, yeah, I was well, going to go and see Nope on Friday, but then I completely forgot that I, that I'd organised the quiz on mm-hmm. Friday. So and then is I was going to go this, Saturday, and then the wife. Friday. I no. think so. Yeah. Is oh, it this Friday or next Friday? I'm sure it's the 12th. I could be wrong. I'll have to put a message. Oh, me and my mates got cinema chat. I might have to chuck a message in now. I didn't realise it was this week. Um, but no, I, I, one of the things that I actually loved about everything everywhere all at once was me and my mates sort of all went into it. We just heard it was meant to be really good. None of us had seen any trailers. We didn't. We just knew it was a multiverse movie. Yeah. And it was just as the movie progressed into more madness. I don't know. It just got weirder. Um, it was. I think it was just us big group of boys um, just absolutely pissing ourselves out. It just looking at each other like, what the hell's happening? And I think that really elevated the experience of it. Um, but I'm really looking forward to watching it again at home. I'm, I'm not going to pay for it because I'm a tight ass. I'm not on like streaming services because I think it's on Apple Plus or maybe Prime. I've got it personally. I, I bought the code for my Canadian 4K iTunes. Oh, right. Yeah. So I've got it on there. Yeah. I'm, it. There's no I mean, No, you can't see it. No, you, you put Okay. Yes, sorry. <laughs> um, no, that's right. Um, but yeah, I'm wait. I'm desperately waiting for a pre-order on Blu-ray or 4K because I will. That that's a movie I will be pre-ordering for sure. Because you can get it now from Amazon. Uh, it's gonna. I think it's like Huawei, Huawei HD, and um, Amazon US is but they're important than other. Yeah, I, I don't really do in. But I I do do some imports, but when I I feel pretty confident it will come out here eventually. So yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait for the UK one. But yeah, yeah, it, it, for me, it's, a, it's an 8 out of 10 movie. Yeah. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. I, I can't lie, it's one of the few newer films I'd give a 10 out of 10 to. I haven't given a 10 out of 10 to a film since 2018. And this year, I've given two out to that and Batman. It's like, so I, I, I never, ever, ever give it a 10 out of 10. Because for no, me, yeah. no film is perfect. You can have a 9, 9.5, but you can't have a 10. Because every film, in my mind, no matter how good it is, will have a fault when you go back or something yeah. in there. Nothing is perfect, in my opinion. Um, that could be interpreted in so many ways. Yeah. Um, but from a movie perspective, <laughs> there can be for me. There's like, like I had this conversation with Batman, Jimmy, because he calls things masterpieces, and I said, although I like a film as much as I do, like Gladiator, I would never stretch to say that's a ten out of ten movie, because everything has, there's nothing is perfect in it. I could watch it, I love it, I love rewatching it and everything like that. But nothing to me is a masterpiece. Nothing yeah. I've watched, I've gone, that's awesome. The only yeah. thing that's probably close to it is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. That's yeah, the that's only true. thing I would yeah. say is close to a 10 out of 10, but I personally never give a film like a 10 out well, of 10. Funny enough, I was looking at this last week. Uh, I was comparing my letterbox lists with someone, and I think I've seen uh, 1,600 movies plus on letterbox so I've got logged, and I've got somewhere between 30 and 40 movies on five stars, uh, so like 10 out of 10s. So I haven't I haven't actually given that many out in the grand scheme of things, but I have given I've given a few out. <laughs> but yeah, I mean the only ones that were cool was like I said, Lord of the Rings, um, Gladiator, mm-hmm. um, even the original Ghostbusters is is for me is up mm-hmm. there. The Batman, um, The Dark Knight. Um, there's so many films that I think are absolutely superb. I mean I'd even give very close, maybe not the Monster Squad, because even though I love the Monster Squad, it's mm-hmm. not up there um it's not it's a i always think it's a good film because after you've watched it and you've the first time you watch it you sit back and you go yeah that was really good yeah you know like um the thing mm-hmm. or yeah. um shawshank redemption those yeah. kind of movies where you sit back and you go well i just wow. like i just that was what i had last week with uh bridge on the river choir i sat back and was like that was fucking amazing that was an incredible film so I haven't seen that in a long, long time. Mm. I've got it on again. I don't. I keep seeing it again on iTunes. Um, yeah. I don't know why it's in inverted commas because I genuinely have it on iTunes. Um, <laughs> but I don't have. Um, I haven't watched it. I remember my granddad and my dad watching it a lot a long time ago. Yeah. Even even when you were probably weren't even born in like the the eighties, I remember <laughs> being on the TV on like BBC One or afternoon yeah. film and all that. But mm-hmm. I, I've never probably set up this. There's, there's one I've wanted to see. I forgot what it's called now. I think it's. Ice Cold and Alex, is it? Is that? Ooh, I don't know. Well, I haven't seen that one. I think John Gilgood's in it, I believe. I could be wrong. So if anybody's watching, yeah. let me know. Um, yes, yes. That, that, that's one I fancied. Um, but yeah. yeah. 
There you go. Yeah, but no, I, I'm, I'm really, as I was saying earlier, I'm into those kind of films in me. I love that kind of Bridge on the River Choir, Lawrence of Arabia, the original Ben-Hur, that kind of sort of movie. I'm really into that sort of stuff. Like, Master, see, I would put Master and Commander on that as well. Master and you, I haven't seen the because there is an old, a, an original one, isn't no, it? No, no, I'm talking about the Russell Crowe one. Sorry, oh, the Russell Crowe one. That's a that's a really good movie, actually. I I'm going to say something that might annoy you here. Um, I always preferred that to Gladiator <laughs> out the two Russell Crowe films. I don't know why they always all got chucked in the same bin together. I like. If, I like if anybody the, here is watching this and what what he's just said, please unsubscribe to James fully. <laughs> <laughs> because if he thinks Master and Commander is better than Gladiator, then he's talking shit. I, 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 I respect I your opinion, but I, you're wrong. Yeah, I said I used to. Now, I kind of like them equally, if I'm being honest. Um, I, I like pirates and stuff. I like all kind of ocean-y stuff, so I, I prefer it um, in that sense. So but have I, you watched I, Mel Gibson's um, Mutiny and the Bounty, then? It is Mel Gibson I, I, in that I, one. I haven't, I haven't seen that one. I know of it, but I haven't seen it. Have you watched um, the original Papillon? Yes, yes, I have. Dustin I have. Hoffman and Steve McQueen. Yeah. That's that is movie. awesome. Yeah, I've got the the sequel isn't too bad, but it's not nothing compared to the not sequel. That's it. Yeah, yeah. The the re, the remake is all right, but it's not as good as that one. No. That. Yeah, no. I actually did really like that movie. That was really good. So good. Uh, yeah. Um. So we've got another one here. We move to some more modern films here. Hi guys, I've been watching the Mission Impossible movies for the first time. Watch Ghost Protocol today. Without spoilers, could you rank them from worst to best? Well, funny enough, Mr. Marcus, I have them to hand right here. Very nice. So, I really want to get that 4K set, actually. Um, this but one. now I'm just sort of figuring there's only going to be two more. I'll wait till we um, get a complete set. What I like about it, but also, it's because it's, it's split up into. You got your Blu-ray and your 4K uh, separate. Yeah, see, I want to get the Bond one that they've just released with all the Daniel Craig spies in, but they've made it like that, and I'm not a huge fan. So best to last. I mean, I'd go two worse, then one, then three, then four, then five. Yeah, five. Uh, yeah, and then six. Fallout is my favourite. I I'll probably say I don't I can't remember who's in each one, so I'll probably say the one with Philip Seymour Hoffman is my favourite one. So I think that's three. Mm -hmm. Is yeah, that right? the J. Abrams one, isn't it? I think. Uh, yes, it is. Um, I, I'm a big fan of the first one. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know to be honest. How I, I like them all. I see. I really enjoy the second one that John Woo did. I still like my my favorite of the later three. To be honest, I I love Ghost Protocol, Rogue Nation, and especially Fallout. I I love Fallout. Fallout's good, and the one before that, Rogue Nation's good. Yeah. But I just love Philip Seymour Hoffman's character. He's so yeah. evil in it. Yeah, no, he and is that, fantastic. And that for me is, is is the best one. Um but yeah, Fallout and Rogue Nation are pretty close. Uh mm -hmm. but the thing is that I like them all, so it's, I don't like ranking them because it's almost like you're saying, Well that was rubbish. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, I do know what you mean. It is hard because especially a franchise like that the thing that blows my mind about that franchise is that they've stayed consistently good more. I know some people don't like two, but like you know, you've just said you like it, I like it as well. So it has its fans. The fact that it had stayed consistent, um, I think is pretty amazing, to be honest. See, this is how I show my age, because I went to the cinema to see the first one. I, yeah. think I went to see the first two, I think, at the cinema, because at that point, I can't even remember what year it was. But, um, yeah, I like uh, is it, um, the French guy in the first two, uh, from the yeah. Leon the Professional. I've forgotten the, yeah, the actor's yeah. name. I liked um, him in it. I remember. Yeah, no, it was, yeah, I, because it was Fanny Newton in the second one, wasn't it, I think? Yes. The and then Doug Grace Scott was the buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, see, I, yeah, I really don't have many problems with that movie because I, I know that people like to put that one down a bit, but I, I just think it's such a solid franchise. I just really hope it can stick the landing because obviously you've only got two left. Hope they don't slip up at the final hurdle. But you always remember the second one because the opening page when he's like, opening stage when he's climbing up the mountain and he mm -hmm. throws the, the, the um, you're a hard man to find, Mister Hunt, and he goes, yeah, yeah, that's that's. But yeah, I think that's. I just really like it. I yeah. think I forgot. Is it Chimera? Is the name of the? Or was that the third one? I can't remember. I'm. Yeah. As I said to you before when we we're talking about like there might be some names on the quiz. I'm 
I'm so bad with names. That's so not in the quiz, by the way. Actually, I might put that in the quiz to so remember. No, Jordan. Do you know what? I still won't remember it. I'm only good with like Star Wars, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, those big franchises, Pirates of the Caribbean. They're the only names where I, which I stick with me for some reason. <laughs> okay, so you've heard it here, folks. First, oh, God, you've heard it here first, folks. The movie book, it was a movie channel, knows nothing about movies. Unless it's Harry oh, Potter yeah. and Marvel and Star Wars. I don't. I'm terrible. It's my memory. It's bloody awful. This is why I failed most of my classes. Um, <laughs> anyway, next, um, a, few, a lot of Alfred Hitchcock talk here. I guess is when we're going over that. Um, do you have Shang Chi and the Legends of the Ten Ring on 4K? If so, where's the video? I did. I didn't do a video unboxing it, but I did a review of it. Um, but yes, I do own it. Um, it's actually my second favorite Marvel film of the Phase Four stuff. To be honest, I really enjoyed Shang Chi. Uh, of the, of yeah. See, this is why I like sitting here because I can just go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. <laughs> to be honest, I haven't watched it since I bought it because it's, oh, on, really? it's on Disney Plus, isn't it? So. I was good. Yeah. No. Fair point. I haven't watched and you've got it. IMAX enhanced. That's it. I'm exactly the same. I haven't watched any of my Marvel 4Ks that I've bought recently because the IMAX feature. So. Yeah. Um. Of the recent ones, it probably is the best. I don't mind Eternals. I don't mm. mind Black Widow, but of the ones which have come out... I think um, Spider-Man's my favourite. Yeah, I'm, I'm not kind of into Clone Spider-Man because we know that character. Oh, right, yeah. So you mean like just new ones? Yeah, so like Shang-Chi, Eternals, Black Widow, because we never had a Black Widow origin story no. as such. Okay. Um, it's my, of all the ones which have come out, Doctor Strange one is my favourite. But of, okay. of the ones of the new characters as such, probably... Shang Chi. I would yeah. say Moon Knight, but I had no idea what was going on in that. I need to watch that again. Yeah, I mean, if we're doing TV shows as well, if you count One Division, that's my favourite. Shit. I, I, oh, I loved One Division. Loved it. Um, but Moon Knight would be my second pick. I I loved Moon Knight as well. Um, oh, then, like, of which, this this one. Where is it? I dislike this so much. It was rubbish. Yeah, I I didn't like that one. I didn't like that one. I like uh, the only bit I liked about it was Brie Larson was in it at the very, 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 yeah. very, very, very end. I'm like, I could have just watched the last two seconds of season you, episode six. This is how I summarize it. I actually enjoyed the first episode. I thought, okay, it's establishing characters. Obviously, she's going to get her powers at the end. This is fine. And I liked the last episode because she was in costume, using her powers correctly, not messing up all the time. But the middle four episodes were the most boring things I think I've watched this year. Yeah. <laughs> It, I think it's very much establishing culture. Yeah, I this, just... this girl's from an Indian or Pakistani background. Yeah. Let's explore that, mm. and obviously they're also exploring these rings. Are they very similar yeah. to Shang Chi's? Did he have the other ones and things uh, like that? Yeah, I mean personally, I love that stuff. I love it when they explore different cultures and these types of things. But they just didn't do it with. I don't know. It just like came off like they couldn't be bothered. It was like just filler. Like okay. Marvel told us we've got to explore the culture. We haven't actually got a story for these middle four episodes, so we're just going to sort of mooch about. And That's how know. I felt exactly the same. Although I love the character of Boba Fett, I thought the book of Boba Fett was filler until we and, get about season three of yeah. uh, Mando. Well, it was literally the last... Like, Don't get me wrong, I loved the last three episodes of Boba Fett. It picked up so because much. Because Mando was in it. Yeah, was Mando, Luke, Ahsoka... Grogu, Cab Bane, all that stuff. Loved it. But the first four episodes were just like... like this is why doing? I've got... I love the character of Ando. I love it. And I'm looking forward to it, casting Ando's character. And I'm like, where can you go with this? And Because there's not going to have any Jedi in it. But with Rogue One, at least you had an end task. You knew it was going to go to yeah. Death Star plans. You knew everyone who was going to die. Etc. and so on. But with Cassie Nando, the Andor series, I'm like, where are you going to go with this? Because all you're yeah. basically doing is doing a story within the Star Wars universe with one character who dies at the end of Rogue One. Apologies, spoiler. Um, yeah. But I'm looking forward to it because I enjoy the character and I like I, him playing the character, but I've just got yeah. concerns it's going to be boring. I think the thing with Andor is they're just using him as like a, a poster character. I think it is literally just going to be about the rebellion building. Um, at least, um, what you call him as back as um, I forgot the oh, so Gerara, um, yeah, which is just yet. sounds nothing at all like Che Guevara, yeah. No, <laughs> I'm really excited to see Bill Skarsgård in it. I love that actor, um, I'm really pleased he's in it. There's a few actors in it I'm quite excited to see, 
And um, I'm curious as to whether anyone's going to pop up because I was certain at the end of that trailer we were going to hear the Emperor's laugh or something because they're in the Senate and it's like, well, the Emperor's got to be about somewhere, right? We're on Corazon. So, yeah, because it's very much the same thing as we saw episode one to three, isn't it? With regards yeah. to that. See, I love, I love, you know me, I'm a prequels guy. Uh, as soon as you see the Senate room, I was like, yes, this is where I want to be. Um, Isn't E.T. in one of those things as well? Yeah, he's in um, he's in episode one, I think. Episode one. Fucking there's E.T. A, gets everywhere. Nonsense. There's a couple of bits, actually. I, I actually, I saw it yesterday, I think it was, and I'd never seen this before. The bit where Qui-Gon's walking with Watto. And or Watto's flying, obviously, and he's talking about buying the um, hyperdrive generator, and they're in like a scrapyard bit. You can see one of the pods from a uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. Found that. Out. Yeah, well, yeah. oh, that was pretty cool as well. So, um, but anyway, no, like I, I don't get me wrong. The original trilogy is obviously my favourite, but I love the prequels so much, and it just makes me so happy when we see things like the Senate room. I, it's like, ah, oh, yes, great. <laughs> yeah, I get so excited about that stuff. Um, Quickly move on before you, you uh, get get yourself silly with regards to the oh, prequels. No, no. There's, 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 pre- there's prequel fans out there now. They've come back. The love for the prequels has come back. Yeah, <laughs> generational, generational. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, what's your favourite David Fincher film? For me, it's Zodiac. Hmm. I might be half tempted to agree with that one. I've got two. Yeah, go on. Fight Club. Go. Yeah, I had a feeling you'd say it's that's not one of mine. I'm not gonna lie. I you. absolutely adore Fight Club, and and I, and I bet you can guess what my second one's gonna be. Hang on, I've got. I, I want to get his films up here because I, I know I'm forgetting some at the back of my head here. Well, where is my David Finch? You've got social social networks in there. Oh yeah, social network. Oh seven, gotta be. Nope. No. Number three. Gone Girl. Nope. Although I do like that. I mean. God, I hope, I hope he directed the one I'm thinking about. The girl with the dragon tattoo? No. I think it's 1992, 93. Well, it's not Alien 3, right? Yes, it is. Oh, it is? Oh, okay, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> because I remember you asked me to do a video and you said, can you send me some underrated movies? I remember now, yes, because it was your fault that I spent money on a box set because I didn't know there was <laughs> like a special... Yeah, it's your fault because you were talking about this director's cut which I hadn't seen, and I had the other box set, so I had to go out and buy the box set with the director's cut in so I could watch it. <laughs> yes, I prefer the director's because it changes the, the animal the face hooker goes into. Yeah. It's a cow as opposed to a dog, mm-hmm. and it changes it, and it makes it longer, it makes the film a lot better. Yeah. Um, I like the darkness and the isolation. God, I could talk about this for ages. But, yeah, but for me, I absolutely adore Fight, Fight Club for me. When yeah. I watched it when it first came out in uni, I used to watch it religiously. I loved it. Meat Loaf and his bat and his man tits, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, especially when he got his head blown off, and you could see that when he brings him on the table and everything. It's just. Yeah. I I just I haven't watched it in a long, long time because I've watched it so many times. Yeah. I want to watch it again, but I've got to be in. Pays much, but yeah, for me, Fight Club, yeah. Alien Three, and then probably. I don't know. I do like um, social network, but again, that's a generational thing. I don't think that's brilliant as everybody else goes on about it because it's it's the Facebook generation, and I'm not the Facebook generation. I'm prior to that, so mm-hmm. it would probably be seven. So it would probably be, and then Zodiac. Yeah. I love Zodiac. For um, me, it's between seven and Zodiac. But I have a funny story actually. I I done a David Fincher ranking on my channel. Okay. And um, what I done is I, I made it one of those videos I uploaded while I was on holiday. So I filmed it, edited it uploaded it and said you know told it to go live on this day so when live on this day i was on holiday i can't remember where i was actually it was because it was a good year ago now um i just remember getting loads of people going where's fight club where's fight club where's fight i obviously forgotten fight club somehow um but i had the best excuse ever i was just replying to the comments like well, what's the first rule about fight club <laughs> That's, that, that is such a bad way out but at the same time a very clever way out <laughs> i couldn't i couldn't like go back and edit it because i was on holiday but i remember seeing like a fig on um um facebook the other day like like a teacher gave her students like write an essay about your favorite film tell me why it's great this kid just handed in a blank piece of paper and she's like what the hell is it she's like he's like well my favorite movie is fight club but first of all we just don't talk about fight club so i can't talk about it (laughs) fair play yeah Yeah, i i think fight club is what i would say is a modern cult film 
I think it is so so well worked with your little just love the bit how like he talks about it and you've got that little bit of penis in it and then yeah. when you watch it on a rewatch you notice a little flickers on the screen where you can see yeah. mm -hmm. a bra pit in there yeah. um it's just so good it's it's yeah I, it's yeah, I can't go on. Yeah. I can go on about Fight Club forever. I just love yeah, it. It hasn't got a 4K release either. That needs a 4K release. It does, yeah. To be honest, David Fincher, I don't, the only film I've seen of his that I walked away from, like, I just didn't really care for that one, was Mank. Other than that, I... That like, was the uh, Netflix exclusive black and white one with... Um, yeah, Gary I did. Like, yeah, I, it's funny. I loved the first half of the movie, but then it just sort of hit a bump in the road and he just didn't want to do anything. I haven't watched that, to be honest, but I, it never interested me. I'm, I'm very much a case of I'll watch a film if it interests me. Like, for example, there's a new film coming out, which is going to be awful, I can know it is, called Fall, or The Fall, about these two girls who climb up this, um, like, radio mast, and then halfway up, it, it, the part of the thing falls off, and they're going to try yeah. and find their way down, or fall to the deaths, or something like that. Now, that's going to be shit, but I'm going to thoroughly enjoy it. <laughs> I haven't heard of it, to be honest, but, um, yeah, I don't know. To be honest, I do put myself through some films, when I know they're not going to be great. Like, I watched like, the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie today. I was like, I knew I weren't going to like it. I literally was just stuck at work. I needed some background stuff. And I was like, oh, sod it. Let's just get this over with. And, um, yeah, I, I didn't like it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll hold my hand up. I watched a film, which is awful, mm. but has rewatchable value the other day. Mm. And it's funny enough, I didn't know this, but it got released today on 4K. And I watched Doom on saturday night oh, right yeah yeah mm -hmm. with I've, dwayne I've, johnson and carl yeah. urban oh my god it's shit yeah I've especially when there's the bit towards the end where it's almost like the pc game and, you, and you're doing first person and, you, and you're running around and everything yeah. um I hate it when they do stuff like that <laughs> but yeah it's a no, do, 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 do i just i would not pay 20 quid to agree that the 4k that film is not worth it yeah um but there you go yeah oh no fair enough well um, Mr. Playtendo guy, he has a good question for you. Come on then, uh, Peter, fire away. Question for Paul. If an Oasis biopic got announced, <laughs> who would you want to play the Gallagher brothers? Oh, fuck's sake. Um, an unknown actor who looks a bit like them and has got the swagger. There's nobody out there now from a British perspective who could play Liam or no. No one at all. No, There's no one even looks like them that I'm aware of. That's sort of how I feel like picking someone to play the Beatles. I don't even know where I'd go in yeah. terms of picking actors to play them. It, it, someone has to at least resemble them. I mean, Austin Butler, he at least kind of resembled Elvis. Yeah. And Romy Malek or Sasha Baron Cohen kind of resembled Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Um, I think that... See, Joaquin Phoenix didn't really look like Johnny Cash. No. And other than being black... Did Ray Charles, I mean, did uh, Jimmy Fox really look like Ray Charles? I think Taron, actually, with all the makeup and stuff they put on him, pulled off Elton really well, I think. I um, haven't seen that because it looks like too much out there in the musical, which is why I kind of stood back from watching that's that. My, that's my favourite of the biopics I think that I've seen recently. Um, well, Elvis is better than that, surely. I think I've heard Rocket Man. <laughs> Idiot. I don't think they're, they're, both, they're both like 8 out of 10s for me, but... If I had to pick one, I, I no, I, I would go Rocket Man. I do prefer Rocket Man. Um, <laughs> but um, who to play the Gallagher? <sighs> yeah, no, I like your idea actually. I would also go with unknowns, unknowns. I think. Yeah, probably but, try and get. There must be out there, like Oasis tribute bands, who the lead singer and and lead guitarist would look similar yeah. to them, mm -hmm. and if they could have some acting, yeah, uh, lessons could do it, but. I, I couldn't pick anybody from current day who could even. I got. I got to ask you as well because I, I, I bought this and I. I really, it's the first time I really haven't enjoyed an album from one of them. But have you heard Liam's new album? I have to hold my hand up. I haven't, because oh. normally I think I've had this discussion with you before on one of our streams. Is I listen to the albums when I'm driving to and from work. Right. Yeah. But because I'm not and I'm home working. Yeah. Then I don't have that. No. Um. So no, I haven't. I'll be honest. I haven't been listening. To, I haven't listened. I've been more or less, um, excuse me, re-listening to um, a band called The Music, mm -hmm. um, who I absolutely adore yeah. um, because they've come back and done a couple of gigs as a comeback. Yeah. Uh, and I did that thing, which I kind of criticize other people for doing, is that I bought a tour T-shirt 
for their recent tour and I wasn't anywhere near either of the tours because I couldn't afford to go. Um, but I've got a music tour t-shirt. So if anybody yeah. asks me, I'm like, yeah, I've got one. I do yeah. have a Neil Gallagher's High Flying Birds tour t-shirt, which I bought after the gig, but I was at that gig. Yeah, um, I done that for, um, I, I went, uh, I mean, it's quote unquote a, a concert because it's obviously the projection thing, but I went to the ABBA thing. Um, I went opening night right in front of the stage. It was awesome. But um, we, we went to some clubs after. And I was like, well, I can't buy a T-shirt and a program because so I'm going to have to carry it all about. So I'd done the same thing. I bought it like the next day um, from the See, I remember, I don't know if it's the same now because obviously there's a generational thing here, but I used to go and see bands. And obviously you'd go in and there'd be like a stand where you can get official merchandise, Spirit, Newcastle mm -hmm. United, yeah. Newcastle University or Northumbria Uni or mm -hmm. yeah. wherever they played or at like the Newcastle Arena or mm -hmm. anywhere you know the riverside or whatever it would be in newcastle mm -hmm. and you'd come out and you'd always have these snide kind of hoodies which mm -hmm. weren't official merchandise mm -hmm. and every time you go out and go do you want to get your music t-shirt or do you want to get your the the, the, the blue tones or oasis t-shirt and i was i miss those days where you could come out and replicate. Yeah. i've got like a um i think i can't i think there must be they've gone now but i had like a, the music one i had the blue tones one yeah, had an Oasis bootleg T-shirt, had them all, but I don't think they do that anymore. Well, I always get a shirt. I've got a shirt from every concert I've been to, and I love getting programs. And there's been a couple. I know when I went to see Keen, they didn't do a program, and I was really upset because I've got a nice little program collection coming along, and they didn't do one, so it annoyed me. I've got all of the. Um, I did a collection, an Oasis collection, video ages ago, and yeah. I've got. I start collecting. I've still got my ticket and program for when I went to see Oasis for the first yeah. time at Loch Lomond on the third of August, nineteen ninety six. Was the first time I saw. I think we've discussed this before, but I've got mm -hmm. like the ticket. I've got is laminated. Yeah. Um, I've got the program from there. I've got the program for when I see them at um, the Be Here Now tour in ninety six, ninety seven. Yeah. Um, Why well, keep the tickets in the programs? That's why I keep my tickets. I just slot them in the book. But... The only other things I've got program wise is I always, whenever I go see Jimmy Carr live, we always get a program. When we see yeah. Jimmy Carr, and on two occasions we've stayed behind and he signed them for us. Yeah. Um, but with regards to, um, I can't even remember the question now. But yes, I mean not that question. What we're talking about. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know who will play the Gallagher's To be honest, it's just it's it's hard picking people to play real, real life people. I think it's the, the problem is both whoever played them are have to be wankers because. Yeah. But obviously, knows a wanker with talent. That's the difference. Yes, yes. It's funny. I've had this conversation a lot with like my colleague at work. He's sort of the same with me. All right, with Oasis. Um, like, like we like their earlier stuff, but that's. I don't want to say that's it. Cause I do like a lot of their later stuff, but we're kind of more lukewarm Oasis fans. Um, but it's like Noel's the one that I really love his solo music. But every time he talks in an interview, he just seems to come across like a right arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> Do, like... I always remember that, that, I, that um, if I remember this right, we were driving down, me and the wife were driving down to the V Festival. What year would it have been? 20, 2007, 2008. We were driving to the V Festival. Mm. And it was the day that Oasis were releasing shock of the lightning is the next signal sig right. signal single mm -hmm. and noel was on the chris evans breakfast show and he was yeah. smashed yeah. absolutely stung over and annie said to me uh, the wife sorry annie she said to me she goes i thought he was an arsehole but after listening to that interview i, I quite like him because he's quite yeah. funny yeah because somebody's messaging was what, what what do you think what makes you the happiest thing in the world and he said when a dog sticks his head out the window he's got his tongue wagging he yeah. goes, that makes me happy because that dog fucking loving it. And, yeah. I, and I, but yeah, but yeah, yeah, I mean, we can talk about Oasis for. I mean, for me, I, I know they do some bad stuff, and I know it hasn't been the best since probably be here now. But they they are still do. If they came back now, regardless of all the shit albums that people might think the shit, they will sell out ten shows in a row if they could. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, I, yeah, they would definitely do that. <laughs> I don't think there's any question about. I, you know, they they are, um, you know, one of the biggest acts to come out in the nineties. I'd say. Yep. At yep. least here in the UK. So. I, I fucking love Oasis. But yes, anyway, yes, we could talk all that. But let, 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 let's quickly move on before I start raving about if people are saying that they hate Oasis because they're all well, wrong. Right. Where are we at in the comments? What one can we do next? Thanks for the question. Uh, That's a good question, but I've got no idea. No, no. To be fair, I, I, I wouldn't be much better there. I, I, I'm, I wouldn't really know who to cast either. It's always hard when you're doing real people. 
Um, right, I haven't seen this movie, but have you? Have you seen the Ten Commandments? Yes. I do you know what? Because it's they, there's a 4K of it now, isn't there? Yes. And but the, it's in the premium collection. I really should get it in the premium collection. The premium collection also has the original from 1923. I think it is in there oh, as well. Does it? Yeah, right. so you get two movies. Surprise. So I think it's three discs because you've got the first film's over two, and then the third disc is, is some special features and the original film. Um, yeah, Ten Commandments. Yeah, it's all right. It's, just, it's, it's the 60s version of uh, Exodus, Gods and Kings, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I still can't get over. Um, I forgot the name of the actor but who plays Christian Bale's adopted brother with a shaved head and the eyeliner. I'm just like, I can't take it seriously. I actually haven't seen um, the Exodus one. I haven't seen it. it. Mike, it's not Michael Shannon, it's somebody else. I See, I like it, but mm-hmm. I like Ridley Scott stuff. Um, yeah. Did he do that? that? Did he do yes. that? Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, to me, it's sort of just, and again, I've seen this and I have a little bit of a soft spot for it, probably because it was my first Blu-ray. Um, but it sort of reminded me of Clash of the Titans a bit like the new one, and I was like, oh, I'm not sure about this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Clash of the Titans, the original one, I absolutely adored when I was younger. I, and I know that's on the premium collection, but I haven't bought it because mm. I watched it to death. You yeah. know, when you get to, like a music and you listen to it over and over and over and over and over and yeah. over, and after a while you go, I'm sick of that. That's what, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen it so many times that I just, I don't, I, I don't mind um, the other two. Uh, Clash and uh, Wrath of the Titans. Yeah, I didn't mind the I didn't mind the first Clash with Liam. Well, he's in both of them, but the the first one. Um, I didn't mind that. Um, the second one, Wrath. I don't know. That one was a bit more of a struggle. I I, I was just like, oh, this is interesting. You're doing a sequel. Okay, where's this going to go? Mm. Mm, not the play I wanted to go with. Um, no. but no. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. obviously you had this big scorpions in the first one. I was like, that wasn't in the other film. No, so. I- that was quite cool. I like the big rock guy that goes around with them, then the whole Medusa stuff. It's you know, it's just cheesy. The thing is, though, whenever you think of Medusa, whenever I think of Medusa, I always think of Clash of the Titans. Mm, so yeah. when I was playing um, Assassin's Creed Origins, was it Origins mm-hmm. or Odyssey? I can't remember. And he has to go through a thing, and, and Medusa's there, and you've got to defeat Medusa. Yeah. I I was like, Clash of the Titans? Yeah. Like, 1982, I think. <laughs> is it 82? Um, hang on, it does sound a spine. Where is it? Oh, very close. 81. 81. Okay. <laughs> That's not one of the questions in the quiz, by the way. Oh, damn it. Yeah, do something in the premium. Can... No, I'm not doing it because I had this conversation with Mr. Anthony Fisher today, and he said, Whatever yeah. you do, don't ask for a yeah that's in a premium because I know James will look to his left and he'll find them. Oh, uh-uh. damn you, Anthony. <laughs> I'll be having words with him later for that. Um... Yes. <laughs> Uh, he knows I've got a lot of premiums. But yeah, Ten Commandments to me was an is an Easter film that my parent was always on ITV when I was younger. Yeah, uh, I've got it um, only on the premium collection. Um, mm-hmm. I wanted to get that and Ben Hur as those kind of big epics from those time to watch again. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, Ben Hur was really that's a really good movie. I only watched that for the first time about six months ago or so. Um, oh, uh, just uh, breaking news here: uh, Olivia Newton John's died. Really? Age seventy three. Wow. Jesus. Well, that's a shame. You heard it here first. That's an exclusive on the movie book channel. Yeah, yeah. Well, hang on, let me rename the stream. <laughs> yeah. RIP for your living Newton John. Yeah, get some clicks in. No, that is a shame though. She's I've got I've actually got a few of her records. I've got the old um what's the one uh Xanadu. That was always oh, the one with that. Uh, I've no idea. No, no idea. No, I only got that one because uh, the Electrolyte Orchestra on it, and I, I I love the Electrolyte Orchestra. So okay. um anyway, where are we going next? Let me find another comment. Um, okay, so um, play Tenno guy, great stream. Um, gonna head off to watch Sonic Two. What, what's your thoughts on the the Sonic films? <laughs> do you want my honest opinion, or do you yeah, want me to, to just sugarcoat it? No, no, no. Let's go. Let's go honest. Let's go honest. I'm expected. <laughs> quite I honest. don't like Sonic One. I thought Sonic One was crap, mm-hmm. um, and Sonic Two, I've had in the background because the kids wanted to watch it. Yeah, but again. It's it. It's aimed at an audience that I'm older than, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Uh, it's not a film I'm going to rush out and buy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a film that I would own. Um, the, the problem was, I, I absolutely, I wouldn't say I hated it. Mm-hmm. I didn't like it very much. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, at the time when it came out to stream, uh, my kids loved it. Yeah. And every time it went down, all I could see is fucking Sonic. 
all the time. Don't get me wrong, it's not rubbish. It's it's middle of the road entertainment. So if yes. the kids put it on to Dad, will you watch it with me? I have no problems watching it with me. Mm -hmm. You know, same with Sonic 2. Um and I, I I'll, I'll hold my hand up. I mean, I've got a, a, a Tails T-shirt, mm -hmm. um, but that's because I like the character, not from the movie, yeah. but from the games. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm not. It's not a film that I I would purchase. It's not a film that would go into my collection. Um, but yeah, so there you go. My honest, honest answer is that I don't have a good or bad review of Sonic. It's just not something I'm interested in. I don't think we're too far off then, actually. I'm sort of the same. I, I, I won't put them in my collection, um, but I love. I grew up loving some of the older Sonic games. Um, and, um, yeah, I don't... For me, both films are just sort of okay. They're mindless entertainment. Um, and I, same as you, appreciate them for a younger audience. So Yeah. I mean, the thing is, though, they're not... I mean, I know I said they're crap, but they could have been a lot worse than they are. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, if it wasn't for the first one, you wouldn't see Ugly Sonic in the Chip and Dale's movie. No, that was, I did not know that was coming. And I, I think I texted about five people, five of my mates, being like, have you watched the Chip and Dale one? Because <laughs> I knew that we, we all took the piss out of Ugly Sonic when it happened. Um, it was just, was it's, just, yeah, it's just, yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, with regards to games, I, I getting into what Peter's saying there, like with Sonic and, See, my generation, God, I sound so fucking old. And when I was younger, when I was a lad, it was like Commodore 64, Amiga, the Vic mm -hmm. 20s and all like that. That's what we played on. I mean, I only bought up, I say bought, my parents bought me uh, Super Nintendo because I wanted to play Street Fighter 2. Mm -hmm. I always remember that Street Fighter 2 was the same year that I got it when Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves came out and Brian Adams was number one in the charts. So around yeah. about that time, um, but I used to love playing. There's a game called. No, I can't play it anymore because even if you play it now, I've got no idea what the controls are. But there was a game called Spy versus Spy, right? Mm -hmm. Where you had these two characters with big corn and noses, and you used to go to room to room, and you had to wire up a bomb. But yeah. you had to keep an eye on your own screen, so you couldn't really see. And if you went to room and you blew, so they had to kind of kill each other, but you didn't know where they were going. And there was another one called not Mission Impossible, but but I think it was called Impossible Mission. I think it was around the world, and it was all that kind of 8, 16, 18, 8, 16 bit graphics and all that. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, those are the games. So then when that came in, I mean, Street Fighter 2 was the only reason I got a SNES. The only reason I then got a PlayStation 3 from that was, no, I got an N64 because of Goldeneye, because I fucking mm -hmm. love Goldeneye. And then I only got a PlayStation 3 because of Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So it all depends on what, at that time, was the platform. Yeah. I mean, in the minute I've got a three and a four here on upstairs, and I've got, actually, that's what I've, got, I've got nothing downstairs, a three and a four up here, but I've got no reason to play to a PS5 other than better graphics. What does it offer? I was going to say that. Um, I've got a PS5, but I don't really touch it much, to be honest, because there hasn't really been any games that come out on it that... Um has taken advantage of the console. I got Ratchet and Clank, which did. Actually, that was very kindly sent to me. I didn't get that one myself. Um, and um, I don't know, maybe Spider-Man Miles Morales. I think that took advantage of the console a bit. But all the rest, like Lego Star Wars, uh, Jurassic Park Evolution 2, they will come out on the PS4, and they would probably be exactly the same on the PS4. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, like Modern Warfare 2, when it came out on PlayStation 3, I don't think that got a, a PS2 release. I don't so. think, yeah. That's it. I know they're stopping backwards compatibility, I think. The new God of War is going to be the last one that's on PS4. So, like, the next Star Wars Fallen Order game, that's going to be exclusive to the new consoles and stuff. So, it, it's, it will get there. But, honestly, I bought a year ago last week because um, my monthly payments just run out on it. I bought Nintendo Switch. I played that a lot more. And I have a lot more fun on that, to be honest. The games are just so much more... I, I like the Switch because I could just take it downstairs and lay about. And like when I've got a hangover, it's the perfect thing. I just sort of sit there monging out playing Mario Kart or just doing an easy building game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I used to have an Atari Lynx. I love oh, my wow. Atari Lynx. That came with the. So that must have been 92, 93 because it came with Batman Returns, the game. Mm. But there's one called Chips Challenge, which I really liked. Um, yeah. I forgot the other ones. But yeah, I had a choice between my parents were like, we'll buy you one, but which one do you want? <laughs> Well, which one would you like, sorry? And I was just like, I like Atari Lynx because it came with Batman Returns. Mm -hmm. I could have had a Sega um, Game Gear, but I, I went say... with Atari Lynx. I mean, I've got a Game Boy downstairs. It's still downstairs with Tetris still in it, the original. 
Uh, but it's, it's it's kind of a shade of orange now because I think all the Nintendo stuff that they release because of the color of them, it's mm. the, the gray. They all kind of they all go yeah. yellowy over time. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, my oldest console was the uh, the Sega one, which um, I can't remember what one, but it was old because I remember like the games being like huge bricks and you have to jam them in the top of the console. That'll be the Mega Drive, that man. But yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I honestly can't remember. But I remember because after my... that they did the Saturn, didn't they? Which was a disc one. Oh, I got no idea. It wasn't a disc one though. <laughs> but I remember me and my dad playing like Formula a Formula One game and Power Rangers all the time on it. That's that's all I remember of that one. <laughs> yeah, I remember playing an N sixty four at my ex girlfriend's house when I lived in Barnsley, mm. and uh, we just used to play. I used to play a dad on uh, Mario Kart sixty four. Yeah, I was yeah. always told, always told, no matter what, always told, <laughs> Toro Yoshi. I think I was. Well, hey, the um, the old Mario Kart games they're still going strong. They're they're always one of the best ones to get. If you get anything yeah. Nintendo. Just I still think the, SC, the SNES Mario Kart is the best one. I mean, oh, well, I don't know. I'm kind of biased. I mean, th- for me, technically, I think the new one's the best because it's the best. Yeah, practice. because it's the new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I have so many fond memories of the Nintendo Wii one. Like, I used to sit on that thing for hours. <laughs> well, I'm think- well, maybe I was speaking to the wife about this. I was thinking about getting my eldest mm. a Switch. I actually said about thing about getting her a Wii because then she's more interactive. It'll be kind of cheaper. And I, then she's like, "Well, I didn't look at the Switch, so." But we'll have to see. I don't know because yeah. I'm I'm just like consoles, not kind of handheld things anymore. Yeah. Well, I, I honestly love the Switch because obviously you can do it on the telly and you can do the interactive stuff. But then you can just put it in your hand if you don't want to do that. Um, I, I I I love the Switch. Honestly, it's one of the best purchases I've made. Um, How much really- are they? I, I don't I can't remember. I, I mine was it might have been is two fifty to three hundred I think. Okay. But, I'm sure consoles are getting more expensive as I get older. Oh, they are. It's ridiculous. But I think the great thing about the Switch is you can be really interactive with it. Like it comes with a docking station. Put it in the docking station. It's on your telly. Or if you want to just sit there, play about a bit by yourself, you can do that as well. I think it's that's why I love it. I think. Fair enough. Huh? Um, if we get one, I'm blaming you. So you can blame me for Alien. <laughs> and I'll blame you for a Nintendo Switch. That's fair. The Aliens box set was only like 20 quid. So <laughs> you're losing. <laughs> yeah, this is true, yeah. Uh, right, I've got another one here. Uh, I've got some bad movie review ideas for you if you're interested. Um, now, there's two films here I agree with, but two I don't. Alien vs. Predator 1 and 2, Predator 4, and Alien 3. Now, I know Paul is definitely going to disagree about, on Alien 3. As do Director's I. cut. Director's cut. Yeah. I know. The, the original one is all right as well. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you on that. I'm I'm also a defender of Alien 3. I don't think it's a bad movie. Um, and I also don't mind Alien vs. Predator 1. I think it's oh, it's just like 5 out of 10 for me. It's plain Jane middle of the road. It's not a very well-made movie, but it's kind of fun. Alien vs. Predator 2 and Predator 4, they suck. I hate those two movies, so yes. <laughs> In vs. Predator, I enjoy. Requiem, I also enjoy. I, from my perspective, and I had this conversation, it's funny if I had the conversation with Rob, yeah. I don't think from the franchises like um, Terminator, Alien and Predator, mm-hmm. there has been a really, really bad Predator film. I, th- I think Predator 4 was terrible. See, I don't mind the Predator. I, uh, I mean, I'm a big lover of Predator 2. I think it's very much overlooked. I think I it's like a good so. film. I was watching two last night, funny enough. I got about halfway through, and then like, it was like 12 o'clock at night, so I was like, I've got to turn it off and go to bed. Uh, but I'd look, I'd see, all those ones there, I like. I wouldn't say any of those are a bad movie at all. I mean, oh. some are better than others. Yeah. Um, but I see, I get ribbed, because I prefer Requiem to the first Alien vs. Predator, because I like it how it's grounded in like a city and things are going on. Yeah, I can't lie. I'm, I'm a, I'm, I really despise the second. The only thing I don't like about the Predator is the mm-hmm. dogs. That's the only thing I don't like about the Predator. There's the films I hate because there are. I know hate's a strong word, but there are a couple I really do dislike in this franchise. It is Alien vs Predator two, Predator four, um, Alien Covenant. And Aliens Four, whatever that one's called, Resurrection. Resur- Resurrection. That that. What's one. wrong with Covenant, like? Oh, Covenant! It pisses me off so much because I've got a, I've got a big poster of it on my wall right here. No, it does that thing again. I love Prometheus. I love the world building it does, and fans threw their arms up in the air, crying about it. So there no. wasn't an alien in it, and he buckled and made Covenant. 
part. It is a cool poster, actually. It is a cool poster, but the movie sucks. <laughs> I've got a Prometheus poster as well. See, Prometheus. It took me ages to find a Prometheus poster. It's so hard to find. I love Prometheus. I, I love that movie. And I think that is the reason I despise Covenant so much because I love that movie. People cried about it. And really, so if you cool. take out the whole, you do the blowing, I'll do the whatever, whatever it is. I'll hold it and you blow whatever. If you mm-hmm. take out that script and that line, I, I don't the only thing I don't like about coming is it's left it with a sequel to be done and it yeah. nothing has ever been done about that sequel. Uh, uh yeah, yeah, no, I don't think anything will now. Um I don't know. There's there's so many things I I mean I've done a whole bad movie review on Covenant. Um It's not a bad movie, man. Oh, no, it is. But, but, I'm, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm biased not... because I like it and I love Ridley Scott. I'll say this. Visually, it is stunning. It's a stunning movie. It's about the best I got for it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly moving on, then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Let me see if I can find another. We're coming up to uh, 9 o'clock anyway, so let's see if I can I find one for us to finish on. Um Hang on. Let me see if I can find a good one. Uh, um, oh god! Oh, oh, I've jumped right to the bottom. Oh dear man! People are going to complain that you missed them out, you know. Let's go with this one. Let's go with this one. Uh, what are your thoughts on about uh, the film Batgirl being scrapped? Definitely a big surprise. Why waste so much money? Not even put it on streaming services. Um, it's funny because I've talked about this on the podcast today. Me and Ryan recorded that today, and um, we haven't spoken about the DC news. So we went. I've, I've already gone all, over this all today, um, even though no one's heard it yet. So I don't think the episode's out yet. But um, yeah, it's weird. It's it's a very odd decision. Apparently, they are going to make like twenty million back on it because of tax returns. I think um, would this film have made one hundred and ten? Back, I don't know. I think it probably would have because it's a superhero movie. People love superhero movies at the minute. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a it's a really weird move. I was kind of low key looking forward. To, I mean, I weren't too excited, but I would have liked to have seen it because you know you got Michael Keaton in it. Not that I'm a huge Michael Keaton Batman fan, but it would have been. Whoa, cool. whoa, 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 what, what? No, no, <laughs> not my. No, 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 not from. I like him. I do like him as Batman, but I'm not like jumping up and down with excitement to see him again. Um, oh, oh. I no, I don't want an old Batman. I want Problem with DC Batman. is DC is trying so hard to try and catch up with Marvel because even though they've had Batman, Batman Returns, and the other two that shall not be named coming in, mm-hmm. and then Marvel just kind of took it up with the MCU and like, right, we need Man of Steel, we need all that yeah. stuff. And then they're playing catch it really to Marvel, but obviously they've also got to realise that DC Comics is a lot darker than MC. MC is like, you know, singing all dancing, and DC is more grimy and down to earth, and the pits of Gotham and like that. But with Batgirl, to me, it's just like Catwoman. With, I've never watched Catwoman because it's been it was oh, supposed to be that bad. Terrible. But <laughs> Batgirl to me, it's a bit like, and I'm gonna get shot on here but it's a bit like harley quinn and we know that i'm not a biggest fan of that movie mm-hmm. but it's not a character who can lead a movie and i don't think batgirl is a character that could lead a movie because if she could why do i have, to have michael keaton in it you know yeah i i, I don't know because it's one of those where i i haven't seen loads of ex- i haven't been exposed to loads of batgirl to be honest like i haven't read any of the comics i only remember from the 60s show and alicia silverstein Yes, yes, I know. I know exactly what you're talking about there because I've wrote. There's a famous clip of, of her, um, but uh, yeah, I I don't know. It's it's I, I get where you're coming from because you know, like why well, have Michael Keaton in it? But I feel like he's sort of gonna he was gonna be the mentor role in it. But either way, I still think it's weird that they scrapped the entire movie <laughs> after they filmed it. Well, it's the same with the Flash, isn't it? Because Ezra Miller's been an absolute cock. So yeah. also touching people and getting into fights and everything. Lucky that film's even going to be finished. So they're just just a bit unlucky at the moment, I think. I can't lie. DC do crack me up. They they say we got a plan. They trip over themselves. We got another plan. We trip over ourselves. Got a plan. Now they're cancelling films, tripping over themselves constantly. Yeah. It's, because it's... they're building this universe, but the only ones which are really good are the standalone ones. Yeah. Like the Batman, mm-hmm. Joker, 
you know, they're all they made the big money because they're standalone. They're not part of the universe. Well, they're all technically, I mean, they are part of the universe, but not like in like a storyline kind of way. No, yeah. Well, I I don't know. I think uh, DC will they get their shit together? Probably not. I think this is just standard stuff for DC. And I'm personally quite worried about Joker too being a musical because you you know that I hate musicals. Well, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I like the first Joker, but I thought we got vastly overrated. And I, I hear Lady Gaga come in. I'm hearing it's a musical. Genuinely, I'm more interested in it. I'm like, you know what? This has actually got me more. In- it's done the opposite for me. It's got me more interested. See, I love the first Joker because it tackled that mental health. It was dark. Yeah. It was very gritty. That bit at the end when... The, I mean, can I say it? Because you, you, have people seen it when, when he shoots oh, somebody? It's been out long enough. It's been yeah. out long enough. We can you know, when, when he shoots um, um, De Niro. Murray Franklin, um, yeah. and then that bit at the end, he gets in the car and he goes like that with the yeah. blood. And then I just thought, overall, when that finished, I was like, something me, I went, that was brilliant. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed that. And I thought it lived up to the hype. I could appreciate that maybe not everybody thinks that. No. And again, with the Batman, there's a dark, grimy, really yeah. down to the roots. But then they're trying to do all these things, which they're trying to make different things with DC, with Batgirl and bringing Batman back in the Flash, trying to make this stuff, making them more in the limelight as opposed to in the shadows like they are. I don't know. It just doesn't seem to be working personally. No, no. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I definitely got behind that sort of stuff with Batman. So I, I just freaking adored that movie. But um, yeah, no, it's um, DC are just um, keeping with their themes of being a complete mess lately. That's all it is to me. But um, yeah. it's a shame. I'd love to have two universes going because you know marvel were so good at what they're doing don't get me wrong they do miss every now and then but they're so good at keeping their universe fresh and exciting and moving along and now we've got a new destination to get to and i think it's you know i think they're you know batgirl will get leaked in the next 10 years 100 percent. it'll get a snyder thing where eventually it'll just get bunged on something i don't think it's a snyder thing i'll just think it'll get like a i remember seeing a, a bootleg of um x-men origins wolverine Mm. I know it's not the best, but I saw I, I downloaded a copy of that, and it still had the green screen and the blue computer oh, graphics really? in it, and then it cut to the proper filming of it. Um, Probably didn't look that much different to the actual movie when it came out. No. <laughs> That's it. Again, I don't think that I quite enjoyed that because it had Gambit in it, and it brought Gambit in. Yeah. And all the film has brought Gambit in it. I love Gambit, but I wasn't sure on the actor. But no. I mean, but but. We'll, we'll, what was sad was I, I I do just really wish DC was doing well. Is my point. I do really wish DC was doing yeah. well. Is my point. Like I, the problem with DC is the the release films and realize ah, and they've got to go back and change it like we've had with the Snyder Cut. Yeah, and now it's like Dwayne Rock Johnson thinks he owns DC because he keeps going about saying. He's, I've heard him say it about three or four times now. He's like the Black Adam DC universe is forming, and it's like Black Adam. Again, I'm not looking forward to that because I although that, like. I'm, although I don't mind Dwayne Johnson and The Rock, no. I don't mind him, but he's a comical kind of leading actor. I can't see the only film of his I own is Jungle Cruise. I will not buy a rock film because I don't think he's been in any good films apart from Jungle Cruise. The only films that I love of his are ones where he doesn't have a big part. Like, like I love Moana, admittedly, as a voicing part. Love Moana. Um, Fighting with My Family is really good, but he's got a really small part in that. Um, that's about it. That's about Maybe it. Pain and Gain might put it in yeah. that. That's about it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have loads. I know there's Scorpion King and, and the Mummy, but yeah. then the bad CGI, and then people see a Jumanji, but I'm just like, uh. See, the thing I'm most looking forward to about Black Adam is the Jazz A. I can't wait to see like Dr. Bate and all those characters. I'm not actually that fussed about Black Adam. I, I'm, I can't wait to see Pierce Brosnan in that movie. He's the bit, he's, I'm most looking forward to seeing him in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see Pierce Brosnan in an actual blockbuster since what, what probably was it going to be Tomorrow Never Dies, is it? Or Day I Die, I Die Another Day? Mamma Mia, come on. <laughs> Fuck right off of that. Yeah. I've never seen that film and never will. Absolute. Now that's 10 out of 10 worthy. That yeah, is 10 out of 10 worthy. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Brilliant. Absolutely. Masterpieces. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. It's nine o'clock, uh, so we'll wrap things up there. Wrapping See, I up told you, it flies right. by, doesn't it? It does. And you know what? It's been a great, it has been a great stream as per normal. It's always a pleasure to catch up with you. It, it's been a while. It's been a bit overdue, this one, I think. So it's been. Yeah, when you messaged me and said, Can you come on? I was just like, Yes. And I said, yeah. The wife, I'm going to go on the live stream with James. I've been on it for a while. 
And then it's like a bus is two come along at once because I'm with you today and then I'm with you on Friday. Yes, exactly. And I'm I'm gotta say I'm buzzing for Friday. I had a I had a scare today. My friend from Poland I got a good friend who lives in Poland. He's like, Oh, I'm coming back and um we'll go down to the pub on Friday. I was like, Oh shit, I'm gonna have to cancel my call. And then um he was like, Oh, it's next Friday. I was like, Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, because when I put the message out, everyone was like can't do this Friday. I'm just like, yeah. oh, well, sorry. Well, we'll yeah. give me because then at the time I was like, oh, oh god, next Friday I'm think, and then that's when I said you dawned on me on Sunday. I'm going to write all the questions. Yeah. So yeah. No, that's yeah. I I I think I've only ever cancelled on a stream once, and I was I was feeling absolutely terrible earlier today. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to tell it at some point. But luckily, it's the next Friday, so I'm I'm still good. So don't so don't basically don't win because then the winner comes on the next weeks if they're available. Oh, Oh bollocks! Well, uh, hey, look, I'm I'm gonna lose anyway. I'm I'm not getting my hopes up at all. <laughs> as as yeah. you as you learned today, my memory is pretty terrible in movies. So, I should uh, make I should make a, a topic, and it'll be like Tom Cruise, Ridley Scott, nineties film, movie bug. It'll just be a complete just one yeah. for you, just yeah. there. <laughs> the, the, the lack square. <laughs> yeah, that'll be it. Yeah, but yes, no. As always, it's always a pleasure to come on. Yes. Um, the problem is, though, we chat so much, you don't get through all the questions. Obviously, I can't see, you can see because you're yeah. uh, in control. So I don't know how many kind of people are asking, but. Um... Yeah, no, we did, we did do a few questions today. And again, apologies to people whose questions we didn't get to. You know, that's just, um, hey, next time, next time. Well, I'm definitely going to do one more stream. I want to get to episode 10, and um, then it might just be. A I'll tell you, actually, before we go, I'll tell you a funny story. Mm. So I put this t shirt on for the stream yes. and my, my, my youngest who's five went daddy what's that and i went this i goes that's mr dna and she went what's that i went well mr dna is mm. basically a caricature of dna which makes up your body my body mummy's body which makes us unique to everybody and then because of that we are who she's like okay but who is he i'm like well basically he's he's a character who basically put frog and other other kind yeah. of dna in, into the amber and made a dinosaur she's like all right <laughs> and I think the wife looked at me at one point and went, Why are you trying to explain DNA to a five year old? I'm just saying, okay, maybe not. <laughs> Love that. That's quite funny. <laughs> yeah. oh, yes. Well, life of being a parent, I guess, there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't remind me. But yes. Well, thank you as always for coming on, mate. It is a, it is a pleasure. <laughs> yes, it is a pleasure. And, and again, I'll see you on Friday. So if anybody's watching this, I'm going to do some. Um, uh, so I'll I have to uh, going to shoot off because as well my uh, my daughter's not asleep. But um, what I was going to say, yes, Friday on my channel quiz night, four contestants. I'm the quiz master. James is going to be there. We'll have all the guests on as well, uh, and we'll go from there with it. But yes, thank you, James, for that coming on. Um, I shall go myself because my youngest five year old is a pain in the ass and it's not going to sleep. <laughs> so thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, I'll leave it with James. Yes, no, thank you everyone for coming by, and as always, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Take care.